Hello. Welcome back to episode 15 of the Phantom Chronicles. So, first of all, I want to use this episode 15. We'll just call it Reset. A um, couple of reasons why. Number one, for those of you that don't know me, which is now most of you, which is an amazing thing. You know, this, this whole thing got started just to help my local model club walk through what I've been doing to build a Phantom. And has turned into 200 plus viewers. So most of you don't know me or who I am. But um, just for those of you that don't, um, like most people who do modeling, I have a day job. And that day job puts me on airplanes and flying across different places across the country of the United States. And so it takes me away uh, from modeling for days and sometimes weeks at a time. And so I haven't been able to get to the bench um, as with the video camera as regularly as I'd like over the last two weeks due to a trip to Dallas and Kansas City um, and I'll be going to Dallas here again uh, very shortly. The cool thing about those trips is I get to see a lot of new stuff and sometimes even visit, visit some uh, hobby shops. So if you're in the Dallas area, shout out to the Wild Bill Hobby Town stores that are all over the place seemingly down there. Um, got to visit a couple of them a couple of weeks ago. And then um, Hobby Haven in uh, in Kansas City area, the so southeastern, southwestern side of Kansas City, is a, a great little store uh, to go visit. Lots of paints and different things along those lines, um, as well as some great kits. But anyway, um, so we're going to do a little bit of reset so we can just kind of gather, if you will, where we are with this Phantom. I have had some bench time, just not with the camera. Um that's one reason for the reset. And the other reason for the reset, you'll know the background um, is different. So I have been listening to what all of you new viewers have told me um, about, you know, if I want to do this better, what I need to do differently and things along those lines. So I very much thank you for that and would love to continue to have your input. One of those things that I did differently is this background, a solid background allows for the, apparently, uh, for the camera to focus. Um, I've also reached out to a couple of other uh, YouTubers, um, that are out there and kind of gotten some advice from them, uh, uh, modeling YouTubers, um, some advice from them. And I've got some cameras as well as some microphones on order. Uh, they aren't here right now. So you'll steadily see improvements over the next few weeks as we release new videos. But for right now, Hey, let's call it a step forward reset here with this, um, solid black background, which will allow us to kind of work uh, work on where we're at. So where are we at with the Phantom? And that's a great question. So, you know, been doing a lot of work with the metalizers. Um, and my episode 14 was on the metalizers and been doing a lot of uh, work on this, the tail end here and what, what's going on in the tail. So you can see I've used different colors, three different colors on the on the back end here with the um, the tail planes, um, those are not glued in right now, um, but they will be shortly. And then I do have the the burn section or the this area built. Um, I've got it uh, all weathered up and ready to roll and, and actually glued in. And you'll notice here also these RTV, I was told, again, by one of you, the viewers, thank you very much, um, I've been able to model some RTV mold um, or some uh, sealant, I, I guess, here on on these by just using a Posca pen and going on the outline of the panel line there. Um, now, these uh, RTV sealants uh, were used predominantly, I guess, uh, by the British, at least in that color, because I, I don't see them on American birds, pictures I've seen, um, but there you go. So this piece is all glued in. You can see that we've got the, uh, the wing all glued on. We've got um, the intakes all sanded down nicely, um, ready for some new primer, ready to get that all taken care of. Now, remember how I do this is, um, again, once I get a, uh, a seam, I do seam check with these Posca pens, pop it on there. And um, then I could see what those seams look like. And um, these are turning out to be uh, in in a nice spot. These are probably, um, there's 
a seam that goes down here. There's a seam that goes right here, there, and there. And then there's just one slightly up here on top. These are probably some of the ugliest seams you have to deal with on this kit. Um, these intakes, they go in decently well, but I wouldn't say they go in perfectly well. So keep that in mind. Now you might be asking yourself, what in the world do I have taped down to these wings here? Well, um, these are the uh, ECM uh, pods or ECM um, little pieces. We'll just call them here. Uh, the the, the uh, pieces that go up right up here on top of the intake. Um, I painted them and prepped them all up. I wondered, and then I realized um, as I was test fitting that you know one is very clearly designed for one side and one's clearly uh, very very clearly designed for the other side, the way the angle is on here. So I taped them up and put them on the side of the wing. So I guess that's your lesson for today. When you have pieces like that that need to go on, just tape them to the side that they need to go on, or you could use a Posca pen or something like that and mark on the other side of them. Um, but the the, uh, the airplane, um, I would say, uh, is all right. Um, it, it's it's ready for ready for the paint job. Um, so I'm going to reprimer this area, um, get that all taken care of. And then XF 19 will be across this portion of the body and out on the outer panels. Um, that's Tamiya XF 19. And then we'll, um, paint the, uh, the inner panels and then we'll switch over to the underside and paint that light gray. Um, but this, this is, uh, getting really, really close to being done. One of the unique pieces on the Brit phantoms that we'll deal with. Um, in a future episode, so the little there's a the window um, frame that goes across here. Well, on the Brit Phantoms, uh, on the left hand side, this window has actually been taken out and being replaced. And there's a periscope in there, so the uh, the uh, guy in the back here, whether you want to call him an EWO or a RFO or um, which a radar intercept officer an RIO, um, whatever you want to call them, they'll be able to look forward uh, with the air um, with that uh, periscope and Z echo 352 um, has that periscope I've seen pictures of it so we're gonna build that piece as well now I did settle on the way that I'm gonna do the decals um, and you'll notice that I'm I'm a huge fan of black tails on airplanes and um, so we are going to do this one there's a couple different options um, the Tiger Squadrons, and one of them is Black Tail the Tiger Squadrons. Um, and so I'm going to do the Black Tail uh, Tiger Squadron markings, which is late 80s and early 90s instead of the brand new, straight out of the, straight off the uh, remanufacturing part, if you will. Um, what else do we need to get to? We need to finish up on our fuel tanks which won't be very hard we'll just scrape these down we already have one side of it working there um, there's the other the other one um, need to do that with need to do a scrape down and a little bit of uh, extra work on the centerline pod for the gun um, and there's the carry for it now this one a lot of you may not realize this this looks like a sparrow missile but it's not <clears throat> There are differences, um, in, in particular in the shape of the nose. These are uh, taken from the Revell uh, Tornado ADV, or fighter version of the kit, and these are Skyflash miss missiles. Now, the British use the Skyflash instead of the Sparrow. I do believe they also use the Sparrow with um, these uh, these uh, F4J UKs, but we're going to use the Sky Flashes. Um, so what I did is I stole four of them from the Ravel 148 scale Tornado ADV or let's see, do they call it something else? No, they will just call it the ADV. So we'll build those up. I looked for res kit versions, but sky flashes were only used on tornadoes and on phantoms that I'm aware of. So there's really not much of an option um, there. The other thing I have to do before I go to paint on the bottom side here is the 
British Phantoms, like many late Phantoms, they had a strap that goes across here, um, which was to help with stress. I had that strap. I bought it. Can't find it. So I reordered the strap from um, Dave Roof over at Flying Leatherneck Models. Um, and hopefully that will come in here in the next few days or a week or so um, while I'm wrapping up all these other things. And we'll get that uh, like that strap put on there. It's just a small, small, uh, it's actually, honestly, it's very thin, but it's big. It's like, goes all the way across like this, like that, all the way across there. I'll show you that when we get there. But um, that's where we are with the phantom right now so what i'll do because i'm really not you know i'm to that point where there's not a lot of things to teach um, at this point or give you plastic modeling answers um, what i'll do is i will probably complete a number of these steps like the fuel tanks get them all painted and then put them on there and i'll just do another wrap-up video probably sometime within the next week um, where we'll show you the next steps of it um, probably will show you um, a little bit on the next video of how I'm dealing with the seats and the pilots. Um, this particular kit did not come with the pilots, or did it? Um, I can't remember now, but I got to yank those out um, or find pilots. And uh, we got to um, got to show you how we're going to deal with the seats. Um, there's the seats in progress. So. Um, I'll show you how to do that later on. So, all right, there we are. A full recap, a restart, if you will. Episode 15 is in the books.